In this video we're going to set up an alarm so you know when excavator is being used. We'll start with a basic alarm then move on to one that can be used in conjunction with Rust Plus to let you know when excavator is active. For the basic alarm we will only need the following components. One small rechargeable battery, one electrical branch, one RF receiver and one flasher light. Right, we're going to start by putting a branch down. We're going to set this to 15 because we are going to use the whole lot out of the battery. Uh, we're going to put down the receiver and then the flashing alarm light. Right, so now we're going to take the power out of the battery and put it into the branch. And then from the left hand side, we can change to a pink and we're going to put this down into the RF receiver. Then from the RF receiver, we're going to put that back up to the light. And change this to 4777, which is the frequency for your excavator. The reason we put a branch in before the RF receiver is because the RF receiver, if plugged directly into the battery, will always draw one power. Whereas if you put the branch in between, it won't draw anything until it picks up a frequency. So with this circuit, the battery will only be drained when excavator is active. And when excavator is active, the light will start flashing, letting you know when it's being used. We will now proceed to wire up the smart alarm along with the timer, which we will do in sections. So for the smart alarm and the second ticker, we will require one smart alarm, three electrical branches, one blocker and one timer. Right, what we're going to do first is place a smart alarm. This is optional. You could leave the light, uh, but we're going to take the light out. So we'll just remove this light. And we'll connect the RF receiver to the smart alarm. Right, and pair that with our Rust Plus. Now we're going to put down two branches. A blocker, a timer, and then a branch above that. Right, so we're going to set this to 10, this one to 1, this one to 1, and then we're going to change the time duration for this to 1, so it ticks for seconds, for it's for 1 second. Right, so we'll take the cable out of this, we'll put it into the first branch, and then from the right hand side of this, We'll then take this down and into the next branch. Then from the right hand side of this, we'll take this along to the timer. And then from the top, or oh, just tidy that up so it's a bit more level, and then up to the branch. Right, so now we're going to change the color to yellow. And take from the left hand side, we're going to put this into the blocker. And then up into the branch, into the blocker. And then we'll take it across and into the toggle on on the timer. Right, so now we take it from the left hand side of this branch and we're going to put it into the pass through the blocker. So this is now going to send us a pulse every one second to allow us to use the counters. Now let's move on to the clock component of this circuit. For this, we will require seven electrical branches, two OR switches and three counters. Well, we'll start off with uh, two branches, two wall switches, and then we're going to put two branches directly below the wall switches, and then we're going to put counters. Now this is for the second hand, or seconds, minutes, and hours. And now we're going to put three branches underneath those counters. Right, we'll set all these up. So we'll set this to one, this one to one, the next two to one as well. 
first one on the left hand side we'll set to one and then the next two we leave at two so we'll leave that as two as well now these ones we're going to set to 60 because it's 60 seconds in a minute and then 60 minutes in an hour and then we're going to leave this as 10 because I can't see it ever going over 10 hours or let alone two or three hours right so now we're going to wire all this up So we'll change our color to orange and then we're going to take it from this branch here. And then we're going to take it across and to the left hand branch on the bottom. Right, and then from the right hand side socket, we'll take this along to the next branch. And then from this one, along to the next branch. All right, we're going to change this to a yellow. That's the power to there. We're going to change the color on it, the fingers and thumbs uh, to blue or cyan. Then on this one, we take the power straight up to the branch. And then on the right hand side, we put it into the input B of the OR switch. And we'll change our color to blue. And we're gonna do the same as we did on the minute one, which is up, up. And again, on the right hand side, straight up to input B. Right, next we're gonna take the power out of here. And we're gonna put this all the way down into the reset or clear counter. Now on this one, we'll change it to cyan. And then we're gonna do the same for this one. So as soon as uh, this one gets power, it will... Right, we'll do the branches up the top, I think next. So we're gonna change the color to orange. And out the right hand side of this, we're going to take this along and into the first branch, second branch, sorry. And then from the second branch, we're going to take this over and put it into the all switch. This is going to be part of the pulse, so we can clear it uh, as soon as the actual thing turns on. So this yellow, and we'll take it across to the next all switch. there and then we're going to change the color on this to purple and then we're going to put this directly into the uh, hour counter to clear it right that's that done ah, we do need to sort this bit out so that's a red this will go down and into the increment of the minute. And this one will go down and into the increment on the hour. So basically when the counter hits its, uh, hits its value, it will send a pulse or a signal to increase the next one along. That's the clock completed. All we need to do now is to add a pulse when the signal is activated to clear all the counters. Otherwise, it will simply incre increment the time from the previous activation of the clock. Finally, for the reset pulse, we will need two branches and one XOR switch. So we're gonna put two branches down and one XOR switch. There are other ways of doing this, but this is the way I've decided to do it this time. So you set this to two and this to one. Right, we're going to wire this up first. We change it to orange and take it out of this branch here and straight into the bottom of the first branch we're going to use on this uh, pulse. And then from this one, we're going to take this all the way around and put it into input B on the XOR switch. change the color to green and then we're going to take it out 
and into the next branch. And then on the right hand side, we're going to take this out and put it into the input A on the XOR switch. Right, and then we're going to change back to orange. And we're going to take this all the way along to where we're going to send a pulse to all the clocks at the same time. All the counters, should I say. Right, there's one minor thing I didn't do, and that is quite important, is we didn't uh, connect up the pulse to the second counter. So we're going to do that now. So this goes along to the counter increment. And that's it done. So now we're going to just test it. We can see that we've uh, had the pulse. We've also had my rust link give me a notification the alarm's gone off. So we can now see how long the excavator's been active. If you could give uh, this video a thumbs up, that'd be brilliant. I've included a rustrition link in the description. Thank you for watching.